Hi right, guys, I'm Phil Town from Rule One Investing and today I want to talk to you about hyperinflation and the future of the US dollar. Inflation is something that many people completely forget to factor in when they're calculating how much money they're going to need for retirement. And with the way things are going today, man, printing money, all these stimulus checks, the value of the U.S. dollar is plummeting even further. And that's going to make it harder to set yourself up for retirement. I recently discussed this topic in a video I did for some of my students, but I think this is really important. So today I'm going to share some of the highlights of that video with you guys right here. Okay, so let's roll the clip. Inflation is on the way. And the issue isn't whether it's here, it's here. The issue is whether it's transitory. And one of you asked that question. The Federal Reserve is taking the position that it's transitory. And of course they are. They've created it. So they're not going to own that we're now in person in, in permanent. Can you imagine the Federal Reserve saying, yeah, yeah, we're in permanent inflation now. They, it's impossible. I don't care if every one of them knows that's true. They wouldn't say it. They can't say it. That'd be like them coming out and saying, oh, next week, we're going to devalue the U.S. currency 10 to 1. So that when you go to bed next Tuesday night with $100,000 in your savings account, you will wake up with $10,000 in your savings account. They will not announce that. Absolutely will not. If they ever do that, they won't announce it. So understand that these people are game playing liars. That's part of their job. You'd lie too. I'm not faulting them. They have to lie. They can't tell you what they really think because if they did, it will affect what you do. It'll affect what the whole market does. And if they said, yep, absolutely inflation cooking along at 8% right now, holy crap. Then the ball starts rolling that locks inflation in on its way to hyperinflation. And that ball gets rolling because now people are realizing the Federal Reserve just told us that our money will not buy as much stuff in a year as it does now. So if I want to buy a house, I better buy it when? Now. You wait a year, that house could double in price, okay? I mean, ask people who wanted to buy a house a year ago and didn't do it. So, I mean, think about a car. Think, oh, we'll put it off for a year. No, a year from now, it's gonna be a lot more expensive because now we have inflation and here we go. So people will step in and start spending money. Now, this is exactly, this is exactly what the Federal Reserve is trying to be get going now since Obama came into office in 2008. But it wasn't until Trump took all the guardrails off and just printed an enormous, insane amount of cash. And son of a gun, he created the biggest V-shaped recovery in the history of the planet, right? We were like on our way to kiss your butt goodbye financially to boom, we're better than ever. It's like, what recession, right? What COVID? Man, alive, it was like a modern day magic show but there's a price to pay for that magic show. And as well-intentioned as it was, the potential impact has been, holy crap, it starts to create an enormous amount of inflation. And the second level impact is the next administration is damn well not gonna put on the brakes. They just got elected. They wanna stay elected. They wanna get reelected in two years from now. And if they slam the brakes on, they know what will happen. How do they know that? They've all seen it before. They've been to this movie, right? 1979, Jimmy Carter jacked interest rates up to stop inflation. It had been cranking for several years. Gold, you remember, went from $35 an ounce to $800 an ounce. That would be like today, gold is at $1,700, let's call it. Let's call it, let's say $1,800. Let's say $1,800, okay? 35 into eight, let's just call it 40 into 800. It's even more than this, but that's 20X. So imagine this, imagine gold at $40,000 an ounce. Can you imagine that? Yeah, you can, because you just saw Bitcoin do the same thing. 
it just went from three thousand to sixty thousand dollars so this is what we're going to start seeing much more radically these big volatile moves of hard assets not that bitcoin is one but you get the idea hard asset that somebody's going to value down the road picassos old mercedes benz you know gold silver um, commodities hard assets um, real estate and guess what else the stock market the stock market can be the biggest beneficiary of inflation in its early stages of any of these asset groups why is that because inflation looks good bottom lines start going up right before all the bad news comes in of everybody saying hey we're union we want more money we got to pay higher costs of food we got to pay higher costs of cars we got to pay higher costs of energy we got to pay higher costs of housing we got to pay higher costs of education we need more money our money isn't as going as far as it, as it used to and you guys have already seen that isn't that true now we've seen there's this place called bucky's that is uh sort of started as a little convenience store in texas and has blossomed into the biggest gas stations i've ever seen in my life they got one over by birmingham alabama it's got like a hundred pumps and there's this big store outside they've got a sign that says you know starting wage 15 to 17 dollars an hour you come in and work in the car wash it's 18 bucks an hour starting wage i mean think about that i mean a couple of years ago that would have been like whoa that's really amazing this is something right now it's like hmm inflation is kicking in on bucky's they're having trouble finding people who are willing to work that job all right i watched a guy go out of business this this, this friend of mine who's got a uh, a little restaurant competes with uh, uh, stuff like Waffle House, things like that. He couldn't get employees. I mean, he, he he was limited by being in a franchise to how he could raise prices, and he could not get employees at a cost per dollar per hour that would permit him to stay in business. And he, but he had he was sitting on land that he thought was valuable, so he just closed it. And all the people that worked there out of, out of jobs, right? So the government has jumped in. And it's now providing people with an income at a base level that is high enough that a lot of people are simply not going to take those low, low level jobs. Restaurants can't get open. They don't have the staff. People don't want to come in there and do, do the hard work. They don't want to do the crappy work and they're already getting paid. So we are in the flux here of of this inflation starting to roll up. And the question is whether it's transitory or not. So the first thing I want to tell you is you can't believe the Federal Reserve. They are not going to tell you the truth if they uh, don't believe that it's transitory. Now, maybe they believe it, but if they didn't, they would still tell you it's transitory because they hope to make it transitory. Now, what is driving uh, the inflation is the massive devaluation of the U.S. currency. And that is happening simply because we're printing money like we've never printed it before in our history. Just to give you some idea of how unbalanced this is, um, GDP in America is about $20 trillion a year. It's entirely possible in the last year we print $10 trillion. That is, you take all the goods and services being sold in America, and then you throw in another, uh, effectively another 50% of the money that, that wasn't even out there before. And what's that gonna do is going to cause prices to rise. People are reaching for more and more scarce goods and services. Now on top of that comes COVID and shrinks production, shrinks factory work, shrinks shipping. And now, you know, people are running out of stuff. It shrunk the chip market so much, they don't have chips to put in automobiles. So now GM and Ford and Chrysler and Toyota, they're all slowing down production. What happens then? Used car prices go straight through the roof. They've gone up 15% in the last year. So these are all the result of a combination of policies from Trump and then now Biden, who isn't slowing down on any of them. Now, who are the winners? as we come out of this, who are the winners? So, well, let's say where this goes first. Chances are decent, decent, that we're about to enter a major economic storm, all right? Chances are decent. Why do I say that? Well, because smarter people than me are busy pointing that out uh, <laughs> everywhere you look. And I would steer you to Ray Dalio if you haven't already listened to what he's got to say. Ray is the best macro investor in the world. Um, a second macro investor's name escapes me right now. I'll think of it in a minute. But uh, probably second only to Dalio has come out with the same dire prediction that it is going to hit the fan. 
Um, you simply can't just print money and have no impact on it whatsoever, regardless of what the academics might want to say, regardless of what uh, the politicians would love to have be true. You can't do it. You have to ultimately pay the price. And the price of printing 35, 40% of all the dollars ever printed in history is a devaluation of the US currency. Now, this is a relatively new phenomenon in American history. I, not that new, but relative to our their total history, the American dollar was a sacrosanct, world-renowned, solid currency because it was backed by gold from when we founded the country all the way until 1934. In 1934, Roosevelt confiscated all the gold with a simple executive order, made it illegal for you to own gold, and took it all away, and then started deflating, or, or, or rather inflating the US dollar. And when he did that, he started the ball rolling and it hasn't stopped rolling ever since. Right now, the US dollar ballpark is worth three cents of what it was worth in the year 1800 and in the year 1934. So this is a relatively modern phenomenon of the Federal Reserve and Congress getting together and just believing you can just print and just print and just print and there won't be any negative result. Well, Ray Dalio thinks there's going to be one hell of a negative result that we're in at the end game of the credit cycle. Warren Buffett is sitting on more money by double than he's ever had in his life and has shored up Berkshire Hathaway's cash reserves on an order of 300% to one. I think we're seeing very, very close to, to the uh, end game here. All right, now I'd love to hear from you guys. Do you think we're close to experiencing hyperinflation and a real devaluation of the US dollar? So leave a comment below with your answer and I'll be sure to follow up with you. And thanks for watching, you guys. Now go play. All right, if you enjoyed this video, you guys, and you think it was valuable in teaching you more about hyperinflation and the future of the US dollar, just hit the like button and please share this video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel. Hey, and don't forget to click the button on the screen for a free gift. Thanks again for watching.